Welcome to uh, our webinar on role of digital technology to future proof food and agriculture in Bangladesh. And uh, we're going to, we're very lucky to have participants from the government sector, from, uh, from, the, from the NGO sector, and also from, from the private sector. And I'm happy to uh, introduce Mr. Deepak Khadka, who, is, who has very generously agreed to be our partners for the webinar, and who is also the country director for IDE Bangladesh. Welcome, Deepak. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone from Dhaka, Bangladesh. I'm delighted to welcome you to this very special webinar hosted by Source Trace in partnership with IDE. The topic today is uh, role of digital technology in future uh, to future-proof food and agriculture in Bangladesh. Uh, we hope that the ob objective of this webinar, as you can clearly see, is to bring together national and international experts who are occupying key roles in policy design, uh, investments and implementation of activities, especially in Bangladesh, uh, and, and in and around the use of uh, innovative digital technology in the food and agriculture sector. Uh, by the end of this event, we hope to shed uh, more light on some of the most innovative practices from both the public and private sector, understand the key drivers uh, that allow this to happen or, or stop, perhaps, and find out some of the broader challenges that lie ahead, as Om said. Uh, just as a quick uh, housekeeping, um, <laughs> sorry about that. The, the event is structured around a few questions from my side to the panel members uh, to get the creative juices flowing. Uh, due to time constraints, um, I will request the panel members to keep their responses in around uh, five minutes so we can have enough time for discussions later on. Following that, we're excited to open the panel to the questions from the participants. Uh, that's you. So as you listen in, if you have interesting questions to ask, uh, please note that down in the text box and Om and I will try to make sure that we can identify the most relevant ones and pose that to the panel members themselves. So without further ado, uh, let me request our panel members who have kindly agreed to participate today to introduce themselves. Uh, and panel members, if you would just give us a short and concise introduction, who you are, what you do, and why uh, is this topic of interest to you? Um, I'm not sure if Dr. Uh, Roth is uh, here. Dr. Roth, are you here? Not yet. I think he should be able to join in a, in a short while, but not. Okay. So should we go with Dr. Muid? Dr. Muid, are you here? Could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, I am here. Good morning, everyone, to participate here. And uh, I'm uh, just uh, at the same time, my uh, so another program program is overlapping. It is very, I'm... Uh, uh, disappointed that for that, uh, because uh, from our another program is running in my another laptop, and oh, wow. I have uh, the panelist on that program, so maybe I have to participate in that program at uh, eleven thirty. So I am just uh, in both program. I am open two laptops and I am connecting with the webinar in the two programs. So uh, thanks uh, everybody. Absolutely. And Dr. Muiz, what we'll do is we'll try to make sure that we get your uh, inputs first. But uh, just give us a, give, a, give the uh, participants a, a quick uh, introduction to yourself, Dr. Muiz. Who are you? What do you do? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Abdul Muiz. I am now uh, uh, acting as the Director General, uh, Department of Agriculture Extension under the Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, uh, I joined in my service in 1970, uh, 1987 uh, through Bangladesh Civil Service uh, cadre, agriculture cadre. And uh, uh, my, in the service life, I, you know, the Department of Agriculture Extension is uh, closely works with the uh, farmers uh, for the boost of agriculture production in Bangladesh. And our, uh, service, our, uh, our extension personnel about 26,000 uh, personnel in my department. They are working from the national level, then the regional level, and the district level. Also the sub-district level, you know, in the Upajala, you call Upajala, and the union level. And then each and union, uh, there, uh, uh, in each and union, there are three sub-assistant agriculture officers per union, and they are closely works with the uh, farmers for disseminating technologies, new innovation and the new technologies 
to the farmers, uh, say, uh, disseminating of new varieties and then other uh, fertilizer management, uh, irrigation management, etc., uh, to protect their crops from the pest and the pest surveillance also. So, in this way, we are uh, giving the training to the farmers. We are conducting workshops. We are conducting field days. We are conducting agriculture fair. And uh, this way, uh, through these tools and technologies, we are uh, disseminating the technologies to the uh, whole of the country. Thank you, Dr. Mohit. Yeah, and, and I'll, yeah. I'll come back and I'll circle back on okay. those points because okay. I have very specific questions for you. And, and it's a great pleasure having you in the panel okay. today. Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, Dr. Zaki. Uh, who has been patiently waiting there. Good morning, Dr. Zaki. Can I ask you to uh, introduce yourself, who, who you are, uh, and, and what brings you here today? Thank you very much. And thank you uh, very much for inviting uh, me in this interesting and wonder, uh, great session. I'm Zaki Zaman. I'm working from United Nations Industrial Development Organization since 2010 in Bangladesh. And with me, basically, uh, UNIDO opens his office in Bangladesh. Prior to working with uh, working for UNIDO, I worked for international finance corporations for about eight years. Then I switched over to UNIDO. UNIDO has been working basically. If I look through the Sustainable Development Goal, UNIDO is basically working uh, is inclusive and sustainable industrial development is UNIDO's goal. That is SDG nine. While we are working with HDG9, we are basically talking about three areas. We are talking about creating shared prosperity. That is mean. Creating shared prosperity. That means people uh, from every strata of the society, including women and old people, can get the benefit of industrialization, economic competitiveness, that is, the country working, uh, UNIDO working, will have better access in international trade and they are internationally competitive. And of course, the most important thing is that uh, industrialization should be environmentally sound and it should safeguard the environment. Our main focus are yes. environment and yeah. energy, trade capacity building, agriculture and agribusiness. Of course, it includes food processing. We are also working in leather sector, garment sector. Those are all broadly under, uh, they're all broadly under agriculture sector. Environment and energy, we also work on uh, build capacity of uh, member states on different treaty member states signed. We build capacity uh, uh, of member states in that area, so, uh, for example, Stockholm Convention. UNIT is also, well, the reason behind we are here, UNIT is also working on fourth industrialization, which is in fact a digitalization things. That is uh, basically the catch for me today. Thank you Great. very much. Thank you, Dr. Zaki. Uh, now I, I just see that Dr. Uh, Roff is also here. We are delighted to have you, sir. And uh, before we go to the next panelist, let me request Dr. Roth to introduce uh, himself. Uh, Dr. Roth, can you give, give, give us a short introduction of you, who you are, and uh, what do you do? Okay, 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 thanks. Uh, uh, this is Dr. M. Abdul Rauf, Additional Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture. I am uh, here looking after the policy planning and coordination of Ministry of Agriculture. Main function is policy formulation and also link with uh, long-term plan, short-term plan, and SDZ, uh, 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 Delta plan, uh, and also the international cooperation. That is uh, the MOU of different countries and also the, um, uh, the uh, 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 delegations uh, from different countries so I come to ministry uh, through me and also I deal dealt with the development partners development partners for development projects and also I deal with the international uh, organization like FAO UNDP USAID like this 
Um, and uh, in this ministry, yeah, I, I am. Uh, uh, previously, I was a joint secretary in this uh, uh, discipline. And uh, um, uh, after that, when I was promoted to additional secretary, then I look after the research of uh, this ministry, research wing. Uh, and uh, in this uh, policy planning wing, I am working for uh, eight, eight months, nine months. Uh, uh, and uh, the basic background is I am come from business economic cadres. That is, um, uh, uh, who is dealt with the planning commission, the planning commission previously. Uh, I was uh, the deputy secretary in 2009 and uh, 2013, joint secretary, and 2017, as 60, I was um, additional secretary. And um, uh, uh, I have two wing here one is policy planning, and another is international cooperation. And okay. uh, 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 this is, uh, and my background is uh, me also an agriculturist. Uh, that is, uh, I am, uh, uh, I have uh, take my uh, bachelor and master's from Bangladesh Agriculture University. And then I have second uh, master's and postgraduate diploma from Netherlands, ITC, the, uh, the Art Science Institute. And after that, in, in service, we, I have a lot of uh, training and seminars uh, in abroad. Uh, this is my short uh, about me. Thank, Thank you. you Dr. That was great. I think I, now I feel like I know you even more. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, let's go to Wasim. Wasim, are you still around? Uh, yes, I am. Great. Uh, thanks for hosting us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, I'm Wasim. I run uh, an online e-commerce platform called Chaldal. Uh, we serve roughly 60,000 uh, families each month in Dhaka, uh, like they order from us. Um, so we also work with the World Food Program uh, in the refugee camps uh, for distribution of uh, food. Beyond that, we have been working very actively uh, to establish uh, our supply chain um, directly from the rural areas for vegetables. And uh, you know we, ha we we are connected to most um, uh, uh, most like large suppliers of food in the country. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know from I bring I have a diverse uh, private sector experience in in, in food. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Thank you, thank you, Wasim. And before we start, uh, we had a very short, uh, not even an introduction from Om. Om, can I put you on the spot and ask you to give your introduction as well? You you're the co-host here with me. Om, you might be muted. Sorry. Thank you, Deepak. So I'm Om Rautrai. I look after global marketing for Source Trace. Uh, may you may not know, but we are a digital agriculture company. We, we provide digital solutions for the complete value chain. And we have been invested in, uh, in Bangladesh for, for almost half a decade now. I guess we'll talk about that a little later. So, yeah. Thank you, Om. Appreciate Thank that. You. And for those who are joining a little bit later, we just finished the introduction of the panel members. Um, and uh, the session will start now. I'll post a few questions to the panel members. Um, and after we uh, hear their inputs and ideas and uh, statements, we will open this up to you to ask your questions. So if you are following us, please start thinking about your questions. Uh, please write that in the text box. And we'll be monitoring that uh, to post that to the panel members. So. Um, so let me start with this by a short statement. You know, there, there is no denying the fact that the current uh, context of COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the move towards more digital marketplace, not just in Bangladesh, but globally. You know, this includes deep changes that we are seeing in our own business and personal transactions from buying things online. I am guilty of that. I buy my groceries online, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and, and we're also seeing structural changes on the supply chain that cater to this market. Uh, given that not all infrastructure, particularly IT and telecom in Bangladesh, may be up to these new standards, uh, let me begin today, uh, today's discussion by asking our first question. And, and let's start uh, with Dr. Roth. Uh, sir, Dr. Roth, on behalf of uh, Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Dr. Roth is also the focal person, as you heard from him, 
for medium and long-term planning, alignment of GOV activities um, uh, on the MOA part with the SGD. So he's got a lot of uh, somebody who's clearly on the driver's seat in terms of policy initiatives. So Dr. Roth, uh, here's the question. What are the steps that the government of Bangladesh is taking right now to future-proof the country's agriculture? And more specifically, in your opinion, what role does technology play in it? Can I hand this over to you, Dr. Roth, now to, to provide yes. your uh, response? Can you hear me? We can hear yes. you, sir. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, respected participants in today's webinar on role of digital technology to future-proof uh, food and agriculture in Bangladesh. Good morning. Uh, good evening uh, for, for somebody. Uh, this is my pleasure to attend in this seminar, uh, webinar. And um, uh, you know, Bangladesh is agro-based country. And previously, we have subsistence agriculture. But now we are moving to commercial agriculture. For commercial agriculture, we have to have the quality product. Otherwise, different country cannot choose our product. There is good agriculture, Petris must be, and IPM, ICM, and other. There is uh, 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 the green agriculture, good agriculture, and uh, 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 this Petris must be needed. Uh, for this, and uh, we, you know, um, uh, we have a small country, but a lot of diversity in our country. We have uh, 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 different hotspot, maybe different area and different uh, environment in different area and different situation, uh, such as uh, flood prone, uh, fresh flood area, salinity area, coastal area, hill area, and uh, flood prone area. Uh, this is uh, and uh, uh, every area has special quality and special uh, product for that area. Uh, and um, we have. Uh, uh, main crop is rice, wheat, maize, jute, pulse, and well seed, and uh, other more than 200 crops in vegetables and fruits like this. And um, uh, our productivity is increasing by high yielding varieties and improved technologies, you know. And you also know that in SDG 2.3.1, we have to have um, double the productivity. This is double the productivity does not mean that the yield should be double. But we have target to make the income of farmers double within 2030. There is less, less bottom 40 percent uh, farmers income. If we make it double within 2030, we, ha we have to go reach the, that goal. That's why we, we have to have diversified our, uh, our crop and because uh, 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 farmers have to have cultivate high high value crop and high uh, price crop. Otherwise, they cannot make the income double. And for this, we are emphasizing on the research and development. Our priority areas: research and development for um, uh, high yielding varieties and technologies, and research extension linkage. We have a strong department agriculture extension. And we have a root level uh, star worker uh, in this in that department. We reach our uh, re research findings to the farmers by extension department. And uh, uh, you know the uh, we have now shortage of uh, labor. That's why we have target on mechanization. Now we are plowing our land by power tiller and uh, we use a lot of machineries and uh, uh, we also use recently we use the combined harvester for uh, harvesting and there, uh, we have a target to full mechanization from seeding to the ripening uh, harvesting and also processing uh, and uh, also we have a innovative and digital agriculture this is also our priority area and crop diversification commercialization, marketing, value chain development, processing, and reduce push harvest loss, yield gap minimization, and increase water use efficiency. And 
quality seed production and soil health and weather data and early warning system you know in uh, in modern uh, agriculture for modern agriculture we must have go to uh, um, uh, digital agriculture otherwise uh, uh, we cannot um, uh, make it uh, make it uh, productive and uh, uh, and uh, high value uh, valuable agriculture uh, uh, you know if um, uh, agriculture is um, not profitable nobody in this in this profession and nobody will uh, come it in this profession and our ministry's target is our vision is sustainable safe and profitable agriculture you know for profitable agriculture we have to have high value crop and also high, uh, uh, high income for farmers we have to have manage this one and um, uh, uh, in developed countries already this uh, uh, high technology and high um, uh, techniques are applying in, the, in this recently i visit the um, uh, australia they they use the um, sensor for irrigation you know you have uh, nobody working here just sensor make the boys to another sensor and another sensor and then open the drain and irrigation water is coming and when it is fulfilled, then automatically sensor close down all the things. This is the digital technology. And, and Dr. Uh, Dr. one yeah. quick question here, uh, because we're kind of running low on time, I wanted to kind of specifically ask you, um, what are some of the policy initiatives that, uh, I remember us having a conversation before this, and you had some brilliant ideas. There's ongoing programs, particularly using digital technology, uh, that is facilitated by your department. Uh, could you shed a little bit light on those? I know yes, that yes. I, 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 I'm going to this place already. Okay. I'm uh, sorry. No, I've been no. given a strict timeline here. Uh, yes, yes. For digital digital agriculture, we use uh, you, you, we use the mobile communication. You know, the mobile communication technologies. That is smart smartphone and uh, satellite uh, imagery and big data artificial intelligence and age computing and sensor sensor network and uh, now we have a lot of apps you know a lot of apps uh, but but, but uh, we have a target to reach all the technologies now we are we have um, uh, our department of agriculture extension and also research organization and other organization use um, tc call center the, uh, to to answer the question the farmers question and also agriculture information service this is working for uh, digitally that is uh, they, uh, they use the chaos and also call center and kishi uh, kishoket janala there is a farmers window we have an app and we have uh, kishoket digital tikana this is another another app we have pesticide prescriber and Tishi Batayon, we have data apps and Rice Knowledge Bank. It is also okay. about the rice. And, and Dr. All... Roth, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to interject here for a second. I want you to think about which one is your favorite uh, while I am going to quickly go to Dr. Muid because Dr. Muid has to leave at 11.30. So I have to ask him one question. I'll come back to you, Dr. Roth. And okay. uh, amongst the many things you do, which is amazing, I would love to hear a little bit about which one is your favorite and why. That's a pending question. I'll come back to you and I'll let you think about it. Dr. Okay. Mohit, sir, okay. I know that you have to leave at 11.30 and I'm so happy that you are here with us. I know you're a busy man. Uh, without too much context, uh, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. One, you know, uh, you've been taking a very uh, a lead role in implementing specialized technology-oriented programs like the Upland, Hauer, Wetland, Dryland, Coastal, and Urban Agriculture. And you yourself have earned a great reputation for your experience and contribution. So well done on that, sir. Uh, we all know that implementation is the key to success of any plan in this sector, right? We can have a lot of interesting innovation and ideas. Uh, and of course, policy is important, but implementation is the key. So from your experience, Dr. Moeed, what are the key lessons here? And, and, and most importantly for those, those of us who are working with smallholder farmers, how do we incentivize farmers to adopt technology? It's easy to say that technology is good. 
How do we make them adopt this? You might be muted, uh, Dr. Muid. Uh, hold on. I think you might be muted. I cannot hear you. Uh, he's he's not muted, Deepak. Oh, sorry, sorry. Now I can hear. But something must be wrong with my computer. Can you hear, Doctor Muiz? Anyone? No. We cannot hear. Doctor Muiz, sir, if you can hear me, can you mute and unmute that? Something is something funny is going on. Yep. Can you now unmute? Uh oh. We still can't hear you, sir. I think his mic is not connected. Dr. Muid, can you try to connect your mic? Do you have a mic that might be jacked in or jacked out? Okay, maybe Om, what we can do is uh, if you can ask one of your tech person to work with Dr. Muid on the side, oh, we'll sure. come back to Dr. Yes. Muid if he has time. We'll Dr. Muid, we'll yeah. try to get a tech person to sort this out. Uh, while they sort this out, if you have time, we'll have you on again. If not, uh, I'm going to go uh, to Dr. Zaki and uh, I have a question for him. But we would have loved to hear what uh, Dr. Muid has to say. I mean, this was one of the cornerstones of our conversation here to hear really about how the implementation part works. So maybe we can get that in a little bit, but uh, Zaki nonetheless, Dr. Zaki nonetheless has a lot of experience on the implementation side, uh, although it's more from a development perspective. So Dr. Zaki, um, you know, well, Dr. Zaki, he's a, he's a country rep for you, know. So I think we got Dr. Muid back. Do we, or somebody was speaking? Never mind. We'll go to Dr. Zaki. So Zaki, you, yeah. you're a known figure in Bangladesh for having supported government of Bangladesh for establishment of food security standards of shrimp for the EU market uh, through your paper-based traceability system and many others. Not just to not just to stereotype into a shrimp expert, but uh, you've done many other things in the key value chain strengthening initiatives. Uh, so with that, coming to trade and uh, access to no, the market, Zaki. Okay, so I think we got Dr. Muid back on. Zaki, hold on. Yeah, for a yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, so, yeah. Dr. Muid. Some technical problem, maybe. maybe yeah. So, so Zaki, think about the think about the question I have for you, and I'll go to Dr. Yeah, Muid. Yeah. Again. So, Dr. Muid, the, the question again to reiterate was your experience in implementation. What are your lessons, and how do we incentivize farmers to adopt technology? Yeah. So, oh, uh, so uh, uh, Dipo, uh, Dipo Kada, you you can continue with the Mr. Uh, Jaman. Uh, okay. Jackie we'll Jaman because Dr. because I am another program. Yeah, I am talking with another program. Yeah, so so okay, you can good go luck with to that. the next. Uh, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Okay. I'm coming okay. back. We'll, come, we'll circle back to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being on hold, uh, Dr. Zaki. So, uh, so, just the question was, you know, again, um, with your experience, um, well, one, just kind of highlight some of the key things that you've experienced, and then tell us how well prepared Bangladesh is to exploit the uh, global markets, and and specifically, what more do we need to be doing? Uh, you know, are, are we going to be left behind um, uh, or are we at the cusp of a breakthrough here? Thank you very much, Nepal. Let me confess one thing. I'm not an expert, huh? neither a shrimp, shrimp expert nor anything. Uh, let me come back to your question. Yes, we worked with the Department of Fisheries through Ministry of uh, Fisheries and Livestock. Uh, that you, all you know, that there was a impose from ban imposed from European Union on the shrimp export from Bangladesh in 2009 because of some problems. We worked uh, with Department of Fisheries since 2010 until 2015. In between, uh, Bangladesh 
got access to inter, uh, European got ex, got access back to European Union market, and they came back with huge success in the in the in the sense that whatever certification is provided by the Department of Fisheries, European Union retail markets accept that and it goes directly to the retail market without further testing at the border level. That is a huge success for uh, Bangladesh. And shrimp is the only sector where food safety uh, standards are, are, where European Union are satisfied for the food safety standards of shrimp sector in Bangladesh. While we are working through the value chain for the traceability system, we worked on the paper-based traceability system. Unfortunately, we couldn't transfer that to digitalization. And uh, we, we understood that only working through the uh, value chain is not enough. We also have to address macro issues, macro issues like legal framework, what is the official control point, laboratory issues, and most important, and people often forget human resource development. For example, if you, you, if you have a laboratory, who will work with the, uh, with the laboratory? It is the hum, human. We worked uh, for their resource uh, for development. Now Bangladeshi shrimp sector is competent. We left in 2015. And in 2018, there was food and veterinary offices audit again. In 2018, November, Bangladesh got clean sheet, clean sheet and still they are ongoing. And coming back to the point, see digitalization, that is the missing link. And this is important. And that's why this today's uh, topic is very much pertinent in this context. Uh, we, what we could not do, I think it is the high time for making this success and transferring this success into digitalization from input supplier until consumers in between the until consumers and what are the technologies you can use bangladesh see unfortunately the reality is that bangladesh is not in a uh, uh, is not the driver of international market other than uh, garments Agriculture is still nascent stage. There are a lot of issues in that areas. Compliance is the main issues. Uh, still, Bangladesh is lacking behind. I, I think if we can introduce digitalization, either in the form of IoT or in the form of blockchain, uh, this is a high time. Uh, good news that agriculture Ministry and Department of uh, and, uh, Extension have initiated, have taken some initiative. That is uh, a very good news. In course of time, if we can implement those things and if we can uh, harmonize our, uh, our inputs in line of the importing countries, we'll be in a better position because we have a lot of competition, competitors in the food sector, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, India, if I think about nearby country, we also we have to go a long way, but it is not tough if we start now. And digitalization can give you the confidence, can give you uh, the belief, can give you uh, the strength, uh, the way Bangladesh can move forward in my uh, understanding. Briefly, I could say that, if that is that satisfy you? It does. It does, uh, Dr. Zaki, and, and there's, you, you just opened a Pandora's box of many more questions to come in because particularly when you talk, start talking about uh, alignment of macro and micro, right? The policies as well as the human capacity uh, and the intent of bringing them together, I'm sure I'm, I'm seeing a lot of questions coming up here, but I'm sure I will have enough time to come back to you again. So thank you for that. Uh, let's head over to uh, Wasim now. Um, so Wasim, um, you know, uh, oh, hold on for a second. All right, so um, Wasim Alib, he's the founder and CEO of Child Al, as you guys heard. I'm just reiterating the, this for people who may have joined later on. Uh, it's one of Bangladesh's fastest growing e-marketplace. And I have to tell you, Wasim, uh, that I'm not only a fan of your work, but also your customer. So Wasim has 
also been very active in working with policymakers, industrial leaders, and government officials to say policy affecting the digital economy, something that Dr. Zaki was hinting towards. Now, Wasim, uh, generally speaking, what is the sentiment in the private sector around where Bangladesh is, Bangladesh is in terms of its readiness for technology adoption? And along with that, since you've worked with a range of stakeholders, what are your views on Bangladesh's agri and food tech ecosystem? Uh, how is this evolving and where are we headed? Right. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so, um, so to take on your uh, first question, I think prior to COVID, um, there was a very different attitude uh, towards digitalization. Digitalization was still seen as an urban uh, thing, right? Like which like new uh, young kids do. But now, like during COVID, like we have noticed that, you know, uh, like places like Karan Bazaar, like causes huge crowds, right? Which spreads diseases, et cetera. Um, and I, we have seen a push from the government um, to basically digitalize parts of, parts of this. And there seems to be a, an heightened interest among like um, a lot of private sector participants because we're seeing uh, a lot of them um, reaching out or opening their own online website. Um, I think from my perspective, like, you know, Bangladesh has done a really fantastic job in food security, right? And we have tremendous work has gone in, in the past, um, like, you know, two decades or three decades or so, right? Uh, but we can go even further. We can go even further uh, if we adopt like new digital technologies. And I will, um, I want to first start with the thing that, you know, digital technology is not just for urban areas. It can, it can actually have impact across the entire supply chain. So I'll start with an example. So one example that I've heard is that uh, a farmer in Kumilla brings his uh, produce to, uh, not a farmer, like rather an Arudar in Kumilla, brings his produce to uh, Karan Bazaar and uh, a truck of tomato. And then there is a, um, a retailer or a big a wholesaler from Kumilla who also comes to Karan Bazaar and buys the same tomatoes, right? And this happens because there's a lack of communication between the local players. So you're spending the money on fuel uh, coming all the way from Kumilla, going all the way back to Kumilla, and you're also damaging product on, on the way. So what uh, our digital technology can do here is that if you create a platform where the local players can interact with each other, right? The fish, like, you know, um, say near Kulna, like can be distributed around the areas around it. It doesn't have to come to a big physical market. So that I think is, is the biggest um, gain that we can have, right? And, you know, it, this is almost like magically we'll have like three, four percent more food if we are able to adopt uh, processes like this. Um, I think, you know, Bangladesh being a very dense country, uh, like we have a lot of advantages where the logistics is not super expensive. Like you can get from one end of the country to another end of the country. Um, what we have been trying to do is we have been trying to reduce the lag in the supply chain, right? Like from the time, say, um, something is harvested, harvested, like say some spinach to when it gets to the table of, of the customer, like there are like four or five hands and we can actually uh, with uh, proper implementation of like online marketplaces, we could probably reduce that lag from say 36 hours down to 12 hours. Um, the second thing that I would say is that there's a lot of opportunity in terms of value addition. Like we're seeing a consumer class develop, which is able to afford a higher level uh, of spending. Like you can see it in things like Bengal meat. Like there's a demand for frozen uh, fish of high quality. There is a demand for imported salmon, right? We are seeing it in the urban areas. And you know, as the country goes towards more middle-class uh, status, like this demand is going to increase. Like we have already known that, you know, on the protein, I know this is about agriculture, but on the protein side, like, you know, there has been a, a rising demand. But what, you know, what I want to add is that there is a, even more opportunity. I want to give another example here. Like I was talking to someone from Pakistan and what they do is that they have a, a mishtiola, like sweet meat maker. And this sweet meat maker, what, it, what they do is that they store their roshogulla for a night in a cold storage, which has, uh, oranges in it. So these Roshogullas get infused with the oranges aroma. And, you know, he's able to sell these uh, Roshogullas at a much, much higher price. All right. Similarly, like, you know, what has happened is that, you know, we have not been able to invest too much in our infrastructure. And I think like 
this needs to go in like you know you can think of like how kobe beef sells for like you know thousands of dollars per pound like we have the labor why not put the effort in trying to make it better like everything like uh, take more care in the supply chain i think that is one really big area uh, for improvement the third area that i see as an opportunity is like e-commerce for farmers and i don't mean that you know the farmers buying shirts online what i mean is that them getting access to um, like seeds uh, or fertilizers online you can understand the demand like you know it, digital technology now allows us to even target specific blocks within the country like we can say that within this 100000 square feet area or within this 1 square kilometer we can predict the demand and we can have the farmers ask for things right it can also help us with like say something like crop diversification if we if we know what sort of seeds are going where we know what sort of crop diversification is happening across the country and the government can take policies based on that like you know uh, and and you know ha have even better food security right you don't want the same grain of rice going everywhere um, so if we could and i think this needs to come from a policy level because from for farmers they're still very very um uh like not digital like they're still probably half a decade away from being digital so if there is a policy push towards like getting like sort of uh, digitally distributing uh, goods to farmers i think that can have tremendous um changes the other thing that can be thought about is that uh you know like uh, something like a uber for tractors why do we need to buy 200 tractors when like you know like uber or pathao you can share a tractor across uh, different uh, farms so this is what digital technology allows like it allows us to use limited resources much much more efficiently and if you're able to trace like transactions at a farmer level or a, a wholesaler level or a village market level you can guide policy financial inclusion etc and you know have really big impact so like the, the 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 digital mindset that people have is like okay we are doing zoom meetings or we are buying something from a facebook page but it is so much more it is a it is an opportunity and i think sometimes especially people on the agriculture side get scared that uh, you know this will lead to higher un unemployment right but the thing is that it will not actually lead to higher unemployment and i i think that perception also needs to be addressed like and i will quote someone like milton um uh, freedman like you know where like he saw i think the panama canal being built and you know he asked that okay why are you using shovels instead of cranes to build the panama canal and they say that we want to increase the employment and then he said that if you really wanted to increase employment why don't you use spoons instead of shovels right so the technology is never about uh, you know it's, it does not really th uh, throw people out of opportunities i think what it does is allows us to have much more products that can be distributed among people right so i think that attitude needs to be present among people like it cannot be just about employment generation it needs to be about efficiency it needs to be about reduction of food wastage and it needs to be about adding value to the supply chain um i think okay. that's all i have to add great thank you that's a perfect segue to uh, receive well first thank you very much very well put very Articulate and then you know in, in support of all the things that we've been hearing from Dr. Roth, um, uh, Dr. Zaki, uh, you've kind of summed up the sort of private sector elements of it around uh, the economic growth, around employment, and also you know I, I love the fact that what you said was beyond just a you know digitization is not just a marketplace where you buy. There's a whole uh, a plethora of things that digitization can uh, do, in, including what uh, originally. Dr. Off was saying was about increasing productivity, right? The goal is there to double the income of smallholder farmers uh, by 2030. So we have a target that we are all going towards, public or private. This is a joint and collaborative effort. So thank you for that. I think that I see Dr. Muid make a very quick uh, appearance there. Um, uh, it's uh, Dr. Muid, are you hiding? You're there? <laughs> Where are you? Okay, never mind. We'll come back to Dr. Muid when you can. Now that brings me uh, in a very perfect timing to my own, uh, our very own co-host, uh, Om. Om is the uh, vice president uh, at uh, SourceTrace, uh, who has worked with uh, Indian IT body, uh, state government and sector promotion at an ecosystem level. Uh, and as a global provider of technology from SourceTrace, Om, I'm gonna put you on the spot here with a quick question. 
uh, what has your experience been in Bangladesh about all the things we've been hearing, uh, and, and what you know, and, and what are the key growth areas that you think, uh, especially in relationship with what we can learn from some of the experiences from other uh, uh, countries, uh, such as uh, India. What what are some of the transferable experiences here? I guess I'm very happy to come after Dr. Zaki and Wasim because. Uh, you know, Dr. Zaki talked about how you integrate with global trade systems, how do you make Bangladesh exports more appealable, and, uh, you know, also specific markets such as Europe. I mean, what are the re legislative needs there? I mean, how does the consumer respond to a product? Uh, and Wasim talked about, you know, the domestic market. I mean, how do you look at uh, empowering farmers? How do you look at ecosystem level changes, which which will, you know, kind of, a, in the not to think of short term, but how how do you go beyond immediate concerns such as employment or, uh, you know, because, you know, immediately we have seen that in all economies and, you know, not just in Bangladesh, but globally the concerns were the moment you increase digitization or tools, uh, you will be putting people out of jobs. Uh, we haven't seen that happening. I mean, now that, you know, we have looked at advanced economies, we have looked at economies across the spectrum. That hasn't exactly happened. I mean, what, what happens is nature of the job changes, uh, nature of employment changes, and efficiency kind of goes up. So eventually, uh, the, the, you know, all stakeholders and economies benefit from increasing adoption of tech. But most of us have these short-term fears of how will tech impact our, you know, the bottom line. Coming to Bangladesh, I guess we have been uh, a key player in Bangladeshi Agri tech ecosystem for, for as I said, I mean more than nearly about five years now, and our experience has been, you know, uh, our, our 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 play in Bangladesh kind of talks about our our uh, experience because we have worked with private entities, we have worked with uh, you know donor agencies, we have worked with uh, Dr. Bhuit's department, and we think you know uh, also the bigger push towards digitization. And also because of specific forces which are unique to Bangladesh, for example, I mean, and you know, if you look at the 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 jump, the significant jump that the economy has made in terms of reducing poverty surely through agriculture, that's a trend that you see is primed for tech adoption. Uh, you see an economy which is which takes agriculture seriously, which takes uh, investing in agriculture seriously, and we think the next obvious step will be technology. Uh, you know, from moving from mechanical interventions such as tractors and harvesters to moving to digital tech. That's the next step. Uh, and again, you know, as I said, forces specific to Bangladesh, to go back to Dr. Zaki's comment, uh, you know, you have seen how Bangladesh's, uh, you know, exports have significantly grown and consistently grown. That is not a single year when, you know, the data has taken a dip export data for last 13 years, if you look at 2007 onwards. So, you know, how do you kind of move to the next level? How do you make, uh, you know, if you talk about fisheries, if you talk about seafood exports, I mean, how do you make Bangladesh's fish exports a prime product? Uh, and that's why we need to invest. First is, you know, kind of do ecosystem level changes so that the country's bottom line, the country's, you know, the poorest farmer have access to information, have access to modern tools, just as, you know, a farmer in, in US or India or, or Europe has. Uh, I know that's that will take time, but that's the eventual goal. I mean, how do you give them access to modern tools at, at a cost which doesn't hurt anyone? I mean, so that's where we need to work. And that's where we see implementation being very different from let's say developed economy to a developing economy, because the cost of adoption has to be less. Uh, the challenges to adoption such as, you know, the literacy or uh, take literacy to be specific. I mean, how do, you, how do you move around that? How do you make it easier for all stakeholders to adopt tech? So we need to think about that, uh, which again, I mean, that's, I guess, something which will impact the domestic sector adoption, but sectors which are more ready for digital technology, such as, you know, trade bodies such as export units, uh, such as multi-donor, uh, you know, multi-donor agency projects, which, which are primed for future-proofing agriculture. So those are specific interventions that we kind of need to uh, take them on a more priority basis. 
So we need a plan which is short term, long term, and then you know how do you bridge the two? Thank you, Deepak. Thank you. That was very nice. Well captured. Well said. And I'm glad that uh, you know Source Trade is such a thought leader in this sector. And we hope that we can hear more about this as we take some more panel questions. So here we are. We are almost at the top of the hour. Uh, you know, it's time for us to move towards the uh, participant questions. Uh, Dr. Muid looks like he's still busy with the other. I, uh, I see him not turn towards us. So uh, before, before we go to the questions from the uh, participants, I would be remiss if I uh, did not say a few words about uh, ID's perspective on digital technology. Uh, you know, at, 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 at ID, for those who know us, we are a big believer in uh, the ability of the right technology to help communities improve their lives. And also we are a big believer in the power of markets to make technologies available and accessible to those who need it the most. That's our core mission. Our global programs, they, which spans from Asia to Africa to Latin America, um, and, and one of the common threads across all of our global program is the ability to understand the need of our clients and to assist and catalyze markets to respond. So that's been sort of our core driver. Over the years, we've been successful in testing new uh, ideas in digital technology here in Bangladesh. I'm very proud of that. Uh, in 2005, we won the Powering Agriculture grant from USAID, which led uh, ID here in Bangladesh to design and implement low-cost, off-grid, solar-powered energy solution with very easy-to-use digital interface for payments. And this was done in partnership with Rahima Cruz. We are also currently working with a range of agriculture machinery companies in Bangladesh uh, and abroad, uh, uh, trying to see how we can develop platforms uh, for machinery service provider to reach their clients and service them more efficiently. This is exactly what Wasim was talking about, uh, you know, um, in terms of uh, optimizing uh, the, the use of tractors. Um, uh, think of this as an Uber for Patao or for uh, you know, uh, uh, or Patao for tractors and combines. And the most recent uh, and exciting opportunity is a new partnership that we're working with Dal Dal here with Wasim to develop a complete uh, seed to table digital marketplace that allows smallholder farmers to take advantage of the recent phenomenal growth in food sourcing by firms and individuals through digital apps, uh, such as Facebook, WhatsApp, Dal Dal, right? So we are firmly committed to the digital uh, revolution that's taking place, but with a pragmatic approach to understanding how it benefits the disadvantage. So that's sort of ID's take on this. Now, with that blurb, I had to insert that blurb. Uh, let's uh, go over to um, our um, very patient um, um, participants who've been sending a lot of uh, questions our way. And Dr. Roth, we're going to put you in the hot seat here because there's quite a lot of questions with your name tagged in it. So, Om, do you want to help me here a little bit? Sure, sure. Yes, as you said, I mean, most of the questions are for Dr. Roth. So we'll kind of a, uh, but there are quite a few for others too. So we'll just, we we'll just kind of a uh, distribute. Uh, so we'll take, we'll try to that quite a few questions. We'll try to take most of them, but uh, okay. So Dr. Raf, I mean, the first question for you is from uh, Zakir Hussain, who is with Helios Consulting in Dhaka. So the question is, do you have any initiative existing or for future to modernize digitally the existing market situation to make the agriculture profitable and save our farmers? I mean, that's a broad question. I, I'll kind of club that with something else. Yes. Do I response? So uh, I'll combine that with something more specific. That is another question which says, uh, you know, rapid price fluctuation has been a major problem for agriculture markets in Bangladesh. And how will digital technology help in that? Uh, you see, in for for first question, uh, we have daily market price website and also e market uh, e agriculture marketing uh, 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 apps, e apps, and also you see the Ministry of uh, ICT ICT Ministry have uh, already launched one website, Food for Nation. By Food for Nation. You can contact um, uh, with farmers and uh, uh, farmers with the central retailer, and uh, you can make contact with this uh, food for nation, and you also make payment by this uh, 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 website uh, uh, apps. This is already launched by the 
ICT minister just uh, the, the three months ago. And uh, our, uh, we have uh, agriculture marketing department, you know. Our agriculture marketing department, EPSIS, e-agriculture marketing. So um, uh, we are, um, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, you know, the, uh, in Bangladesh, a lot of middlemen are working uh, in between farmers and uh, wholesalers. And uh, that's why my price should be much, much, uh, much, uh, much higher. So we are thinking to directly make a contact with farmers and market. And that's why we introduced the farmers market in centrally, Sage Bhavan of Dhaka. And also we have a target to make it spread in the district and upajala level. Every upajala have one market for farmers where farmers are take their goods directly to the market and no middlemen, no, uh, and their goods also say safe and nutritious. That is, they uh, use the good agriculture practice. And also, uh, you know, in Dhaka, this market is very uh, popular to uh, nearby peoples. They are uh, engaging in every Friday and Saturday, we have this market in morning. So uh, this is uh, one question and second question. What is the second question? Uh, I guess the answer was about, uh, there are also other questions which talk about the same market connectivity. I think you uh, answered yes. that question. Uh, the yes, second are, question was something. Yeah. Yes, the first question was about the long-term question, which I think you partly answered in your, in your talk earlier, about how do you make ecosystem level changes? Uh, so I think we'll come back to that later. Uh, next question is Wasim for you and the question is how does the use of digital platforms address the issues of quality assessment, grading, essaying and trust in procurement of the products because they are very subjective matters and most traders prefer to physically inspect their produce. Uh, yes, uh, this is this question is from Nepal in fact. Yeah. <laughs> this is in fact a weakness of the digital uh, platforms. But we know from things like eBay that you know each seller uh, can gain trust based on the transactions that they have, right? So for the first time and one-off transactions, obviously, uh, you know it's a risk. But if we're able to track sellers and buyers, and we know the you know people who are behaving well and people who have good transaction history, uh, you know this can actually facilitate things and in fact reduce the need for quality checking uh, because uh, you will know that you're getting things from a uh, good um, supplier or you know you know that the buyer will not cheat you for things but to initially I would say there is a lot of uh, um, involvement needed uh, to set up the quality standards and standards like vegetables and this uh, cannot be done by a single company or entity this has to be uh, ecosystem wide drive uh, with um, hopefully involvement of like NGOs and government uh, to standardize the produce. Uh, once we have standardization, then like, you know, it can be taken much further. And may I just want to say one thing, you know, to, to the colleague who asked this question, to the person who asked this question, uh, it, it is actually quite an interesting thought right now, broadly, uh, to say that, you know, we're going from a completely analog uh, physical market here to that jump, which is digital market. And there's a very interesting uh, terminology, not coined by me, I cannot take credit for it. It's called a fidgetal, right? So there is a hybrid model where yes. there's a need for a graduated step to go to digital, which is a fidgetal model where there is elements of physical features and functions that are still needed to augment the digital system. So there, there is a sort of a need for us to graduate, gradually go up uh, and, and earn the trust and, and, and have solid systems and processes in place before we completely go into a digital base. So, uh, you know, and, and hopefully, uh, Wasim, we, some of the initiatives that we're trying to work can be part of this learning. Uh, I have a good news, uh, both Deepak and Wasim. I think uh, the gradual change has already happened. So we have a solution called Trace Next. Sorry for the plug. Uh, but we have a product called Trace Next, which combines, you know, traceability with uh, with spectrometer based quality assaying. So what it currently we do this for around 22 commodities. So what it does is, you know, we have these uh, small devices, which 
which point a camera at a produce it can be you know it can be for example if you you know if you pass a stick of turmeric through it it will tell you the you know the equipment content of it uh, so what it does it, it looks at both trade parameters and safety parameters in terms of trade for example let's say if you look at a oil seed what is the oil content in that uh, no matter what your trade parameters are it can be curcumin for turmeric it can be oil content for a oil seed for grains i mean no matter what parameter you look at and safety in terms of is there any residue uh, of pesticides of of anything i mean i guess you decide the factors it takes you know if it's a new commodity it will take us for a around 2 weeks to train the software for that uh but we can do that currently for 22 commodities and it's instant is ai based it's 99% accurate and it gives you the data for that commodity instantly on on a digital platform so it can be shared with a buyer anywhere in the world so that has already happened uh i think the scale of i mean the technology is so new that we haven't seen adoption catch up yet but we will we'll kind of a, we'll see that soon great should we go on to the questions again but you know uh, welcome welcome back dr muid um good to have you back here again sir uh, and before we take uh, om we take another question yes. well, well, i was wondering if there was a specific question for dr muid uh, if you could look at that uh, if you would go through the uh, if you would go through kindly go through the, yes. the list of questions let me let me briefly ask yeah sorry go ahead om No, I think I mean he hasn't spoken yet. So if we can, uh, we have one yeah. question about the dairy sector. We can ask that once he right. does his opening talk. Yeah. So Dr. Muid, um, you know, again, we'd like to welcome you back to the panel. I'm glad that you are here to join us. And uh, you know, we were talking a lot about digital technology, uh, farm agriculture, uh, food, uh, so on and so forth. And one of the things that we really wanted to hear from you, Dr. Muid, was you know you, you are at the implementation front line. uh with dae with you know 20000 plus staff um and we wanted to get some idea from you uh in terms of what some of the things we hearing from dr zaki also on human resource cap capability capacity is uh what are your lessons H how do we train our next generation of public sector extension services or private sector extension services to be uh, aware of the changes dramatic changes that are happening in the world particularly in digitization and and how uh, how are you doing this uh, in your department uh oh i think we got the same problem again dr mohit i cannot hear you again yes i think so Uh, should we move to questions, people? Yeah, Dr. Mohit, let us know when you figure out the uh, audio. We'll come back to you. Um, okay. Om, over to you for uh, for another question from our wonderful viewers. Uh, this doesn't say who it is for, I, but I think it is for Dr. Rauf. It says, "Do you think under this umbrella, livestock and fisheries will be included, and what benefit of digital technology can be used in dairy and poultry subsector?" Uh, you know the agriculture sector uh, have three part one crop fisheries and livestock ministry of agriculture dealt with crop there is crop agriculture uh, fisheries and livestock is another ministry but um, uh, uh, we have linkages uh, with this ministry and uh, for fisheries and livestock they have uh, another uh, individual program for um, uh, uh, this uh, the, 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 the. may I, may may i chip in here oh, sir. Sure, sure. okay Th thank you for that question for livestock thing i i came to know that uh, there is a new project under world bank called livestock develop livestock and dairy development project they will introduce a pilot program on the livestock insurance things 
So digital technology will be very important here because uh, this will be a data, you need to have a database for farmer. If you, if you do to, uh, if you even go for pilot phase, 10,000, 20,000, whatever it is. So database, that database will tell you uh, about, the, about the age, uh, size, and also about farmer and what is their existing health, science, health conditions. And a feed habit also also can be understood. So this will be, and uh, this will give information to livestock uh, insurance provider about the uh, about that cattle uh, about that cow. So they they will be very much. Uh, they will um, uh, sh can show their interest whether they will go for insurance or not. Apart from that, one private company. Uh, I think other private companies in the, in the dairy sector, they are using digi uh, simple digital technology for measuring uh, the way uh, uh, Om a uh, couple of minutes ago mentioned that they have 22 products and piloted, 22 piloted products to identify level of uh, whether there is presence of pesticides or any other uh, foreign material inside the product like that one they can measure uh, the, what is the fat content is a simple technology. And based on the fat content, they provide, and they, they provide price to farmers. Higher the fat content is, the higher the price is. So this is a win-win situation for both part. So in the livestock sector, definitely there is a possibility. Fisheries, uh, digital technology, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe possible for, for for example, nowadays, due to smartphone and GIS system, people can go to a field and can measure what is the size of the pond. That is instant. They can get what is the size of the pond, what is the stock there, what are the, uh, what are the uh, fishes inside the pond. So these are, I think these are very uh, and, uh, easily measurable. And, and the stocking day, release the harvesting day, what are the, uh, feeding practice. So this can easily be done through this technology in my opinion. And this will open, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this will open uh, a market for Bangladesh for international mm -hmm. arena in addition to what Mr. Wasim mentioned for the child dal, they can, uh, for the domestic market as well. This will give confidence both to the consumer and the farmers and international buyers as well. Thank you very much. Hello, Debo Katka. I think uh, Debo Katka, yes, can you hear me now? Debo Katka, can you hear me now? Yes, sir, we can. We can hear you. I'm sorry, my. Yeah, my now, now I can. <laughs> now it's a technical. It was a technical problem. Uh, now, uh, now it's okay. And Great. you can hear Welcome me. back, and we would love to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, you know, the, our agriculture uh, in the field of agriculture is a very, some problems, they are, the, the arable land is singles and the population no, is increasing. No, 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 no. So, food security is the very no, 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 no. much important for our country for uh, ensuring no, 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 no. food security. And, uh, and the, and the, and the, and the uh, farmers, uh, we, we are always thinking for the profitability of the farmers. And the, it depends on the fair prices of their products. It's very much important. That is why these today's discussion on the, uh, through the webinar and the uh, digital technology to future proof food and the agriculture in Bangladesh. I thank the organizer for arranging this type of very uh, important uh, discussion. And I think it will be helpful for our uh, future strategic uh, development in agriculture. And you know, the uh, the uh, in the in the in the, the pandemic uh, COVID-19 situation, uh, the farmers in the, uh, 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 the last season, the uh, farmers uh, did not get their fair prices of their products, and we are very much uh, very much uh, anxious at the time, and. Uh, uh, through uh, the digital uh, digitalization or e-commerce system, the the uh, the the the, uh, the, the, the uh, marketing of their products 
uh, we had uh, thought that time. And the, you know, the our uh, initial secretary discussed about the food for nation, a platform from the A2I, uh, uh, A2I, uh, the access to information, and 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 it's running from that time. And the availability of the produce of the different parts of the country, uh, it's uh, uh, we place the, the information in that uh, uh, platform, and then the very uh, others e-commerce. Uh, there's the Chal Dal market degree marketplace and the so many online shopping uh, they are get the information uh, where the produce is ready uh, for the purchase and the uh, which part of the country and uh, then then they can contact with that farmers and uh, they can uh, purchase that and uh, receive uh, and and they send it to the uh, consumers uh, this is the uh, from our market uh, linkage system and you know uh, digital, uh, digital, uh, digitalization in the agriculture sector and the uh, the uh, we we develop many things. There is the, we have the call center one six one two three from the agriculture information service. Uh, through that call center, farmers can get the uh, different uh, suggestion from their uh, agriculture problems. And another from the A two I triple three one is the also call system uh, we develop that the through triple three one if the farmers uh, th throw their call uh, to get the information uh, and then they get the info uh, they the suggestion uh, for, for for their uh, uh, reducing their problems in the farm levels uh, through the uh, that call system and and you know that we have the largest uh, portal system in the kishi Batayon, uh, the agriculture portal uh, from it y also and here uh, we have the many uh, a, a about 82 lakhs database of the farmers by this time uh, in the portal and uh, gradually we have the target uh, to bring all the farmers database in that uh, platform and and that platform not only the uh, farmers database but also the uh, hard buzzers information and the other agriculture technology information in that but you can uh, go in that uh, you can see uh, the many information in that uh, uh, portal and uh, you know uh, we have uh, provided we have provided the taps to the all uh, our union level officials that is sub agriculture officers and uh, 30 thousand lead farmers and through the tab we are we are uh, providing sometimes many uh, agro meteorological uh, forecasting uh, and the bulletins uh, yeah. what will do uh, the uh, adverse uh, climatic situation and uh, we uh, send them uh, through the message and the uh, in the, in the, in their tabs and the 30000 lead farmer they also disseminated their information to their neighboring farmers and uh, not only that but uh, this uh, another we have the portal the BAMIS portal Bangladesh Agro Meteorological Information Service portal in through that portal uh, uh, anybody can get the uh, in, uh, uh, the, the meteorological information and the what will do in that uh, time uh, the agriculture activities and uh, another things is the we have the three apps we have many uh, many apps not only three Kishoke Janala Kishoke Tigana and the pesticide prescribers and the the apps in the in their tabs uh, for farmers also who have the uh, Android mobiles, they can use that apps and he, they can get the information of agriculture technologies from their tabs. And uh, we we are we are going to provide the smart card to the farmers. And the smart card uh, after getting their all the database of the farmers, we are going to provide the smart card to the farmers. Uh, and if you there should be the um, QR code, uh, QR code in the uh, smart card. And if you can scan with the uh, smartphone, you can get the all information of that farmers who have the uh, owner of that card. And uh, also some of our uh, officials, they are um, uh, uh, they are very expert in the IT sector. They also produce some the video uh, uh, documentation of the field success studies. Uh, uh, this is the one of things with the Kishi bioscope, and uh, they throw it to the YouTube. And you can get the many information of the success story uh, through that YouTube. And also, we are uh, developing the our we, we have the horticulture center. We are producing seed and uh, uh, sapling of the fruit saplings in the horticulture center. And we 
uh, we are uh, 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 generating the website of the horticulture center that in which horticulture center, what are the saplings are available and what the price and anybody can get uh, from their uh, uh, respective uh, home, they can get information of the horticulture center, what are the saplings is available, what is DJR, what's the price, and then uh, uh, getting that information, he can uh, go to the horticulture center and purchase the saplings according to his DJR. And also we have the phytosanitary, we are giving phytosanitary certificate for the exporting the agriculture products. And it's also the automation system now uh, farmer, no uh, exporters come to my office. They can, uh, through the automation uh, system, they can uh, get the participatory certificate, uh, providing they are also uh, they are uh, fee, fee uh, through the uh, this the automation system, and as well as fertilizer renewal or the fertilizer registration system. We are also going to make it automation. So. So many uh, digitalization uh, systems we, in our uh, department and in the agriculture sectors. And I think uh, the, it is the uh, presence demand of the agriculture to, uh, to import or to uh, access to the, uh, this uh, information uh, system or uh, uh, the digital technology system in agriculture. And so we are uh, advancing in that way and we are running in that uh, way through the uh, digital technology uh, system in agriculture. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for question sharings. Uh, Absolutely. And, and hold on, Dr. Muil. I'm not going to let you go. Give me one second. A couple of things here. Yeah. Number one, that smart card is an amazing idea. I wish we had more time. I would love to talk about that. I can see already Wasim leaning into his uh, laptop listening about the smart card. That has a, it's a game changer in many ways than one. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. That's an amazing initiative. Thank you, Dr. Bui. Yeah, the thank second you, one, thank I'm you. going to actually tie up one of the things you said to a question that uh, our friend uh, Salihul Rahman has been asking uh, here. Uh, you talked about meteorological data. And in the current context of you know, climate vulnerabilities, uh, particularly uh, rapid onset disasters, um, is there anything that DAE currently is thinking about or doing in terms of linking uh, meteorological data to some sort of an early warning system for farmers? Uh, because we're talking about food and agriculture, that meteorological data to safeguard production or, or to yeah. warn farmers early. Could you share a very quick light on that, uh, Dr. Mui? Yeah, we have the project, the, the, the meteorological project, and the, it's a collaborating project with the uh, metro, Department of Meteorology. Uh, uh, there is the BMD, Bangladesh Meteorology Department, and also the uh, uh, there is the Water Development Board, and uh, the f from the uh, Department uh, Bangladesh Meteorology Department and the Water Development Board, uh, Water Development Board, we are collecting the uh, forecasting data. Uh, next uh, seven days or the ten days, and then uh, we. Uh, with this data uh, and with the forecasting data, we communicate with the research uh, organization. There is the Bangladesh Rice Research Institute, Bangladesh Agriculture Research Institute, BGRI. There is a focal person in that uh, research institute, and we discuss with that focal person what will the present uh, crop uh, crop status in the farmers in the field, and what will they do uh, uh, after uh, for uh, uh, for uh, escaping the the disaster. Uh, coming disaster, and then we throw this. Uh, we prepare that bulletin, and we throw it to the uh, uh, throw uh, to the taps of the thirty thousand lead farmers, and also our all SOs uh, and the all officials of uh, the department. That's why it's a quick uh, dissemination of the information for escaping the disaster and to save the crops of the farmers. Thank you, Dr. Mui. That was such a succinct way to say it. Now, Om, before I hand this over to two, to two further questions, although time is running out, I wanted to prioritize two questions. The first one I'm going to ask you, Om, and the second one I'm just going to prepare Dr. Zaki here. Dr. Zaki, I'm going to ask you about cold chains in a second, so you better be prepared for that question. Uh, Om, here's a question from one of my colleagues uh, who works uh, in our head office, but currently is in Vietnam. So this is a blatant plug for IDE, but I'm going to ask uh, anyway. So his question is, uh, you know, having improved traceability could have catalytic impact, allowing for cold chain, improved export prospects, higher uh, value, value chains, etc. However, as you have said, this requires considerable investment in the ecosystem, right? Can you say more about what types of 
Farmer Advisory Services and what farm certification Source Trade actually provides. And very importantly, does Source Trade invest their own capital into strengthening the ecosystem in this regard, or do you try and leverage other sources of capital for ecosystem strengthening, for example, improved production and certification or anything like that? I hope that question was clear enough. Yes, I think uh, I'll answer the last part first. We are a service provider. We are not an investor. We, we don't have funds of our own. So what we do is we kind of digitize processes for stakeholders who are eventually our clients, but no, we do not invest our own funds. Uh, and pharma advisory services, I mean, I think, uh, you know, after Dr. Mweed's talk, I mean, that's uh, Agromate is one of the projects that we're working on in Bangladesh, which is about meteorological data and turning them into advisories for small farmers. We, in fact, that's one, uh, that's a project which we are doing in across Africa, India, uh, Bangladesh. So, uh, you know, it's a very basic need. The farmer needs to know what will happen in terms of weather in near future. Uh, but so far, we haven't exactly uh, been able to deliver as an ecosystem that basic data to farmers. And what you're doing here is we are trying to simplify the whole process. I mean, because that is a lot working there is a lot of work being done in the weather space. Uh, I won't say that, you know, there is a 100% assurance yet on weather prediction. But even that, I mean, how do you take the most advanced prediction to the smallest farmer at a cost that, you know, either he doesn't have to bear or he can bear. Uh, and so what you're doing there is we are providing a platform which is cost effective. Uh, which works on, you know, uh, if you have a digital, if you have a smartphone, it works for you. If you have a JTME phone, if you have a feature phone, no matter what phone you have, no matter what language you understand, and no matter what your literacy level is. So our goal is to take that data to, you know, each and every farmer, no matter what your connectivity, language, understanding, exposure to technology. So I think that's a, that's in agriculture, that should be seen as a basic need uh, and you know we are providing we're doing that in multiple countries but yes, we'll love to talk more about that offline great yes thank you all. Uh, dr zaki uh, if there's somebody who has been desperately wanting to find out the status of cold chain by the way sorry Om, the earlier question was from my colleague chris nicoletti and this question uh, dr zaki is from engineer mohammed zahinun uh, to you, it says, what's the status of cold chain in Bangladesh? Without a proper cold chain backed by real-time data, do you think Bangladesh could add value to its agri-products? Would appreciate your observations. From uh, Dr. Uh, Engineer Mohammed Zainul from Inter-Exchange Solution Limited. Thank you very much to the questionnaire, uh, to the person, gentleman who raised this question. This is a long pending issue, basically. Cold chain is, is a long, long story here. See, co uh, in my if you ask me, I would say private sector, private sector has to come here. If they say business, unless it will not work. Just to let uh, uh, the gentleman know, IFC International Finance Corporation has invested in cold chain where, with one private sector company in Bangladesh. They are. Uh, involved in agri processing sector, they are in a different agri. Pro they uh, supply this in the market. Also, probably they also go to international market. So they basically got IFC investment for their company. In addition to that, they will also provide services to those who need services. And the, uh, the, regarding the second part of the question whether without cold chain, Bangladesh can, uh, can sustain in the market. Say, in which firm Bangladesh want to go to international market, that is the important question. If you see the process areas, there are a number of companies are running their small refrigerated van for the processed goods, there is. But for the fresh goods, it is barely found. Hortex Foundation once provided these services, to my knowledge. I'm not sure whether they are still providing their services because it was one of the, it could be one of the income sources for, for a company. Uh, for, for many of the products, in, it includes uh, tomato, in mango season it is mango, 
and there in Ch for chilies and for many more things. In my opinion, private sector has to come. I, and if they want to see the business here for the coal chain sector, and without coal chain, whether Bangladesh can sustain or not, uh, there is an analysis by even uh, Angtad. They identified 24 products for, for Bangladesh, where 12 are from garment sectors, only two from agricultural sectors. So, and, and, they, and they see this competency, they call it revealed competitive advantage. We, the, if the value is, value is more than one, the sector is competitive. Only uh, for two agricultural products, value is more than one. So for getting access to the international market, price is an important issue. Safe product is an important issue. And also for safety products, uh, cold chain is an important issue, and whether this could be traced or not, as Mr. Ohm mentioned, that could be traced from farmers to consumer markets. That the technology is there. If a service provider comes for the cold chain sector, I would say uh, that would be a profitable area. And Bangladesh, if Bangladesh can minimize cost, Bangladesh will be in the international market as one of the important players. Thank you very much. For the question. Thank you, Dr. Zaki. Oh, maybe we have uh, time for one last question. We're right up to the. Sure, sure. The I month. think uh, a lot of them will go unanswered here, but we can take one or two more here. Uh, do you want to pick one? There is one question for Wasim, uh, and it's about your how do you handle your logistics? Uh, very curious question, but I think if you want to answer that, you know, do you own your I, fleet? I, do you. But Wasim, this is, by the way, from a competing firm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> uh, so, Deepak Katka, can you hear me? I can, sir. Yes. <laughs> I have to leave again for the another program. So, I apologize for that. And uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for uh, so your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah, very appreciative thank of your time. Thank you. We appreciate that. We're almost at the end as well. So, thank you. Uh, so regarding our logistics, it's a mix. Uh, so when we started, obviously our last mile is um, is is a challenge because uh, on average, like you have to deliver to a lot of locations. Uh, so an average basket is like 15 kilos. So we use uh, mostly our own logistics, but we have also started using third-party vans, which we do like monthly leases on for our last mile. Uh, for the farm to our warehouses or like say manufacturers to our warehouses, that is mostly like trip basis, third party uh, logistics. Um, I think there is a room for optimization there because I think uh, like it, it, it gets hard to find um, avail available uh, trucks when you want them. Uh, so again, like an Uber sort of model over there uh, could help to redistribute the trucks in the country. Um, so yeah. Thank you, thank you, Vasim. Uh, Deepak, should we end with, because there's so many questions for Dr. Rao still, we can probably end with another question for you, sir. Okay, okay. So this one says, uh, may I know the preparedness of the Ministry of Agriculture combating COVID-19 pandemic? And how does that affect the plans and targets, uh, you know, in terms of sustainability? Uh, you know, after COVID, we already make a uh, action plan for 2020. Uh, the short term plan, medium term plan, and uh, long term, and, uh, 97 projects we selected for that. And we are already uh, um, uh, uh, have some fun for short term projects. We are analyzing this one very quickly. And for medium term and long term project, we are making the development projects for that. And uh, you know, in uh, COVID, uh, we have a borough, borough harvesting, but we have all officers and our ministry is open for that. And, and our field workers are in the field uh, near to farmer. And uh, we, uh, we have 2000, uh, 200 crore agriculture machineries for combined harvester and harvester like this. And we move this machine from one place to another place. And also, we we uh, um, uh, make an arrangement for movement of labor also. 
so uh, that, that's why agriculture production is not hampered. Boro, boro uh, 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 production is more than target. We, we, we achieve more than target. And also in case of house, though it is in uh, some uh, loss in, uh, for, for, for flood, but uh, we also achieved uh, our target in house production also. And now we are moving for uh, Amon. Amon have we have uh, lots much uh, target, and um, uh, I think we will uh, fulfill our target. And uh, we have no shortage of food grain, food grain, and we also some program with uh, uh, um, vegetable uh, garden, by vegetable garden for nutrition. Uh, that's why uh, the government give, give a lot of subsidies to the farmer to make this garden as a, as a model garden in every 20, 20 farmers of, a, of one union. And by this, by this way, we are um, uh, like to habituate the farmer to take nutritious, nutritious vegetables. And we, we also um, uh, targeting high value crop, you see, the um, um, Keshwa nut and coffee. We have made project for Keshwa nut and coffee for hill tract. And, uh, and we have a lot of uh, program um, uh, for uh, future agriculture, but we are not so much affected by the COVID. Uh, though uh, we are not affected, but we are very much alert uh, to combat the COVID. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Deepak, over to you. Okay, well, <laughs> it seems that we're now at the end of this wonderful session. Uh, first of all, a big thanks to our panel members, Dr. Roth, uh, Dr. Zaki, Wasim, uh, your invaluable support. Uh, without that, this would not have been possible. We appreciate your patience, your thoughtful responses, um, and, and thank you for, for working with us in our little tech glitzes that we saw. Uh, that's been the norm for the webinars lately, so we'll, we'll try to do better. Uh, and it's been an excellent learning experience for, for, for all of us. So a uh, big thanks to the participant as well for your very thoughtful comments and questions. We really appreciate it. That's what makes, makes webinar more exciting because it's, it's the unthought of and un, unintended questions that kind of you know, gets us thinking even more. Uh, Dr. Roth outlined how wide and deep the current government of Bangladesh initiatives are in the digital tech space. Maybe it's not widely known by all of us and oftentimes we kind of ignore that but certainly the intent of the government of Bangladesh is to move forward in this area in partnership with private and development initiatives like, like all of us uh, here who work in development agencies. The real scalability question for me is that identifying which ones are specifically suited for public goods, therefore should be implemented by public systems and which ones are better suited for private sector, therefore can have real scalability and, and uh, long-term sustainability opportunities there. Uh, you know, I personally believe that there's not enough resources or time for duplication. So that's, that's one takeaway for me. The next one was listening to Dr. Zaki. You know, he, he said quite straightforward that we know that export standardization, even in the toughest market like EU, is possible. And, and, and there's an example of shrimp having done that. But, but there are both macro and micro constraints, particularly the policy and the implementation, and in the HR capacity that he identified which needs to be aligned to the overall goal of the sector. So thank you, Dr. Zaki, for that. Wasim, I really like the fact that you highlighted that Bangladesh is uniquely positioned to take advantage of digitization, given its uh, geographical and social features. You know, we talk a lot about this. It's a flat country, dense market, young population, great connectivity in South Asia and Middle East, trade routes and all of that. But I'm glad that you also cautioned us to, to not to stereotype digital technology just as a digital marketplace. It's not just about buying goods, going to Facebook. It's about how to make digitization beyond just this markets. Uh, you know, we heard from the panel that digitization can be used for targeted inputs, climatic data, demand and price forecasting tools, uh, developing just-in-time inventory model to optimize public investment in inputs. And, and on, on a whole new level, we haven't even talked about today, the financial services, right? Insurance, uh, loan processing, uh, you know, identification, verification. Uh, and they, I mean, there's, there's a no end to that. So from, from our perspective, you know, we really want to thank you this. We look forward to working closely with uh, Governor of Bangladesh, uh, Dr. Roth, with you in contributing towards the achievement of your SGD goals and our SGD goals, all of our SGD goals. 
In particular, we share a wonderful working relationship with the Ministry of Agriculture and especially with DAE. Uh, and I'm looking forward to working more closely with uh, Chal Dal for our upcoming new initiative. Thank you, Wasim, for that. And needless to say, uh, Om, it's been a pleasure co-hosting this with you. So Street is clearly one of the most innovative organizations in this sector, and we hope to hear from you soon in, in uh, some collaboration. And Dr. Zaki, you know I'm a big fan of yours. You've been a great, uh, uh, solid um, uh, professional in terms of getting UNIDO focused and, and supporting the initiatives here. So with that, uh, thank you so much for allowing me to moderate this session. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I was nervous to begin with, but uh, because of uh, how the panel members are, my nervousness was gone. So thank you very much. Over to you, Om, for the closing, and I'm signing out now. I'll just thank you, Deepak. I mean, uh, I don't think we could have found a better moderator. And thank you for participating. Thank you for contributing. Thank you for organizing this whole conversation. Thank you for working behind the scenes, uh, you know, writing those long documents. Uh, thank you so much for all that. And I'd also like to thank both Afzal and Rishad who worked behind the scenes but have contributed towards making this possible. Um, so that's it for, for this edition. I, I hope we can do this again uh, and take, because I mean, going by the number of questions, I think, you know, we can probably plan uh, something else soon. We'll let you know. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, panelists and organizer, and also one of 52. Many thanks. Thank you so much. Many, many thanks to Source Trace and ID. And thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zaki. Thank you. Thank you.